Welcome fans to another Dark Side of Mono Games session and where for the first time ever we'll be actually going to be covering something not developing on Windows. Today we're going to be using Visual Studio for Mac on a Mac. It's very rare that you'll find me on Mac and on Apple hardware. It's I like Windows. But I know a significant portion of developers out there who are developing with Mono Game also like to use their Mac for development. So let's dig into it. As I said in the previous video, but if you're just coming straight here, Monday Game 3.8 is about to release, and this is a whole new ball of wax. Having new .NET Core and .NET standard support, we have a new .NET Core tools delivery, and also there's no installers. Which granted, Max didn't really have installers. We had lots of things you had to point here, there, and there. But now, it's a level playing field. The same way you install in Windows is the same way you install on Mac, which is a great news for you if you're building for Mac. And also now we have Visual Studio for Mac for Mac developed, which is basically a new and rebranded Xamarin Studio, but with tons of extra features in there, including a lot of ways to help us deliver and get forward. And also, if you're used to previously using Visual Studio, you'll be well at home using Visual Studio for Mac. It's just, it is just a great experience. So what we're going to go through here now is everything we can do when we're building on Macintosh with Mono Game 3.8. So we're going to go through some Windows desktop or Linux or OpenGL DX kind of projects, building content pipeline projects, Android, iOS, and macOS because they're separate on a Mac. However, the one thing you won't be able to do on a Mac is build for Windows 10. That, like building for a Mac, you need a Mac. If you're building for Windows 10, you need to be on Windows 10 just to have the build pipeline and chain to actually do it. Not to say you can't build your project for that, you just can't build it on Mac on a Mac, unfortunately. Now, when we install it, obviously, if you install Visual Studio for Mac, if you've not done it before, it's a simple case of you simply go to the website for Visual Studio, select the Mac version, that will download the Visual Studio for Mac installer which is similar to the Windows variant, uh, you will get a warning to say, are you sure you want to open this? Because you're getting it from Microsoft, you're not getting it from the Apple Store. Maybe one day in the future, they actually will publish to the store, but this is the most common way to get access to it. You can click open and OK, because basically this is just Microsoft helping you to get this on there. Once that's running, you're going to get the Visual Studio for Mac install, which is a much tri a trimmed down version of what you have for Windows. But in here, we have everything we need to get going. So we've got the main installer. We've got the .NET Core targets, which is critical for Monday Game 3.8. So make sure you've got that enabled. And then we've got targets for Android, iOS, and Mac. Install simply whichever of the options you need. There's only a few there, so you just need to select what you want. Uh, bear in mind, if you're going to be building for multiple platforms in different ways, there's ways to actually tailor your solution to make sure that it's multi-platform friendly. But So check out the video guide, guide I did on Monogame multi-platform, uh, which I'll likely update in the future to adopt these new sort of .NET Core way of approach of addressing all the tools. Now, as I said, Monogame 3.8, which is at the time of recording, is soon to be released. Let's hope it makes the end of 220 something good for 220. In this, it's a whole different ballgame now of how we deliver, how we get Mono Game 2 developers, because it breaks apart this whole having to be dependent on what you've got installed in the machine and where. Everything's online. It's using NuGet now for getting all the project templates so that they don't need to install anything. You have the templates. They get all the monogame things off new gets off foreign references, so you can update quickly and easily as you wish without having to worry about how your dev machine is looking. Even the templates now are deployed through a Visual Studio extension, even on Visual Studio for Mac. And also there are command line or terminal commands for working with the tools and everything else. Effectively, monogame just got way cooler. It's really going to the modern age and going forward. So for getting into the Mono Game project templates, you will need to create a blank solution because Visual Studio for Mac doesn't give you a way to op open in a no code method. We can start any project, doesn't matter what it is. 
whether you keep it or not, simply to get into the interface. From there, you're simply going to launch the extension manager, which is on the Visual Studio command at the top left hand corner of the window, select extensions, and then search for Monogame. And that'll give you access to the latest Monogame templates for Visual Studio for Mac. If you want to do development builds, I suggest you look on the actual Monogame document site, which will walk through if you need to actually have the latest and greatest. If there's something you must have and must get hold of today and can't wait for the next release. Once we've got the templates, we also need the tools because Monogame comes with the uh, Monogame Content Builder Editor or the old pipeline tool as it was called. And this is the tool we use for editing our content in our game project. You need to make sure you have the .NET SDK installed. It doesn't come, although we have the .NET Core development environment, you need the SDK tools installed on your Mac to have access to the actual terminal tools. Once you've installed that, start a new terminal window and simply run .NET tool install minus G .NET hyphen MGCB hyphen editor. That installs it for anyone on your Mac. If you wanted to install it locally just for you, just set the .NET tool install commands for changing that. Once it's installed, and this is late breaking news as I'm recording this because this has just been fixed, it can also then now register the Monogame Content Pipeline Editor with both your operating system and also with Visual Studio for Mac by running the MGCB hyphen editor hyphen hyphen register command. This means that any content file you click on or open in the Visual Studio for Mac will also then open up the editor to make it nice and easy to use. That's it's a long riding thing which is very recently got fixed as I, as I record this, but by the time we're all using it, it would just be second nature. It'd be fine. So we've got our development environment, we've got Monogame installed. What do we need to make sure we're prepped for Android? Obviously, we need to make sure we have the Android target in the Visual Studio for Mac installer. That gives us the last latest Android SDK. Beware, because it is a very fragmented program. Run the SDK update to make sure you got the whatever versions of the Android SDK NDK installed to meet what your target platforms are. Uh, there's no current Amulet emulator support for Mac that I'm aware of, but we can use both the Visual Studio App Center, which will build Android for us and also test on physical devices, or you can simply plug in your Android device and deploy to it that way, which I'll be honest is the most preferred way of doing because then you get to see it in your hand. But use App Center because that's what it's there for, for building, testing, and even deploying out to multiple devices your builds to get people testing. So how about for iOS? Well, as this is a Mac environment, obviously it's a lot simpler. Again, we make sure we got the iOS components installed to give us access to deploy to phones and iPads. There is a iPhone simulator that comes with Xcode, but you need to install that separately on your machine. So you'll go to the store, download Xcode, and also make sure you change the options to install the simulator as well. It doesn't come by default, as I found out. Again, Testing is critical, especially physical testing. The simulator is good and it'll use the power of your machine you're building on. But some devices are slower, some devices are faster. So test, test, test. Again, Visual Studio App Center also has the ability to build and test into iOS devices and ship them out to multiple partners to actually test it for you on their devices, which I've used to great glee when I'm trying to build these things. So I highly recommend looking into and using that service. Now, for building for Mac, it's a separate component. So if you want to actually build for desktops or laptops, you then also need the Mac OS module. Again, test and build the device, but make sure if that, again, whoever your target audience is, whoever you want to be able to be able to run or play your game, test on all the hardware, have other people check and test it and make sure it works. Uh, there isn't an App Center deployment option for this, so you have to rely on people you know, people you can reach out to to test on these things or have a stack of the old, the old Mac hardware you've had through the years that you just couldn't bear to let go because of how much money you just spend on the device. But test, 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 as with everything else. Now, the standard advice I give for building any modern game project, one, plan ahead, work on the target devices you want to do, 
different screen resolutions you want to support and different kind of hardware profiles you want to work with. Make sure you've got a plan for how you're going to address all of those within your project. Don't just build it once and then think of it later because then you'll end up having to re-engineer some of your projects like to be resolution independent or to have different inputs, path styles and things. Plan ahead. It's very key. Again, mark it early. Make sure the fact that if you're doing a project, get out as early as you wish. Do a development blog. Get, show screenshots and things. Build up interest in your game out there. If you just try to publish to a store, it's invariably going to fail. Um, unless it's Flappy Bird Mark III. And it might take off. Who knows? But one of my best advice here is that make sure you test and test often. And make sure that you have other people around you, either through communities and things, to test it for you. Having a different set of eyes. Even how people who don't like that type of game test your game because they'll give you the most honest feedback of how to make your project better and work with the maximum amount of people. So, thanks for watching. This has been another Dark Side of Money Game session. Um, like, subscribe, let me know what's good, bad, or what other content you want coming forward. So, enjoy and uh, solidarity, brothers and sisters. and. Let's hopeful for a better 2020.